Welcome, everyone. Our opening hymn, Here I Am, Lord, can be found at number 395. That's number 395. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, mindful of God's mercy and love. And so to prepare our hearts and minds to celebrate well, we take a moment to acknowledge those times we have not been as Christ-like as we ought to be, and invite the Lord to shower pardon, mercy, and forgiveness upon us. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved daughters and sons, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. tested me though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. But Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, then tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. The second reading from St. Paul to the Romans concludes this evening with the words, love is the fulfillment of the law. And indeed we know that because Jesus is that ful fulfillment, that Jesus is that love of God that is revealed to the world. In our readings today, we take and have challenges for living in community, both from Ezekiel and from the gospel. Because in Ezekiel, there is that reminder that as a community, we work together. And that the Lord takes and speaks the word to us and issues, corrections that need to be taken or issues, again, admonitions, issues, wonderful sayings of who we are to him, being his precious children. And it then becomes our responsibility to share God's truth 
with the world. Now remember, the truth of God is not always what the world wants to hear. However, we cannot be afraid to tell God's truth. It is expected of us to speak God's truth in the world. So it says, if you happen to see a sinner who is doing something that is against the law of God, basically, it is your responsibility to have a conversation with that person. Oh, but Father, I could never do that because I, what, they're not going to like me. They may say, it's not what Father is saying. It's what God is saying. God is saying, you need to help others on the path to holiness. And expect that others may help you and call you sometimes on the things that you are doing. Be open to that. And if we let that be a context for today, that this is what God is calling us to do. It's not because Father has asked me to do this or Sister has asked me to do this or because my mom and dad have asked me to do this. It's what God is asking of all of us. And we need to take that seriously. When we come into the gospel, remember that Jesus has taken and established Peter as the rock with the power to bind and to loose. And here it's given in the midst of community. So the community also has that ability. But how do we receive that ability? It's because of what Jesus has said to us. You know, if you have, if your brother or your sister has caused you harm, then you need to go to your brother and sister and tell them that they have harmed you. Oh, but, but Father, I, I can't do that. No, this is what God is asking. We are given the framework of how to solve problems in the gospel today. What is known as, and apologize for the language, it was known as fraternal correction that we have the ability to work with each other and help each other grow in holiness. And here are the steps to do this. So if someone has wronged you, if someone has done something horrible to you, then you need to tell that person that that's what they did. Oh, I don't know about that. Because I'm hurt. And that's why you need to tell that person because sometimes people don't realize the words that they say actually hurt people. So let's presume that that's the case. The person has said this or done this really without any thought of malice, but because of their own self-centeredness that they did this to you. And you have been wronged by them. We need to go to that person first. And if you will, err the grievance. Now, if that person doesn't want to accept what you have to say, okay, but maybe they might, and maybe there might be some rec reconciliation at that stage, or maybe there might be some understanding that is reached. But Jesus says, if they won't listen to you, then take along a couple of witnesses. That community so that all the facts might be known and put into the conversation. And maybe that will change the heart of the one who has wronged you. If it does, there's blessing. If it doesn't, then you take the next step. Then you bring the matter to the church. And we're talking about things that are very serious. And then if that can be brought into this community, again, all the facts being established and trying to work through that and that understanding of how much that forgiveness is needed and that heart changes, thank God. And then Jesus says, well, if that doesn't work, then take step four. Treat them as you would treat a tax collector or a pagan. Wow. Now, what does that say on the surface? 
that basically we can take and treat them as if they don't exist. They don't matter. It's because they're not one of us. That's the surface reading. The deeper reading of that is that what would Jesus do with a tax collector and a pagan? He would engage with them. He would love them. And that's the heart of this matter. That love is the fulfillment of the law. So even when we have these grievances against our sisters or brothers or people have them against us, that we still need to try to bring that out in the open. Have you ever had a situation in the family? I know I've had a situation in the family on my own with this experience that at one stage, um, my brother did something that was horrible. Absolutely horrible. And it affected all of us in the family. We needed to confront him on it. But nobody wanted to do it because we are afraid of the consequences. Well, unfortunately, since we didn't deal with it at that stage, it got worse. And so our feeling, my feeling of anger and resentment toward my brother got worse because I didn't have a chance to air the grievance, if you will. And it was eating away at me. So I found that I was being short with everyone around me because this was all-consuming. And my spiritual director said, Michael, this is only hurting you. You need to be able to say what you need to say. You need to bring it out into the light. But I don't want to. I'm afraid to do that. And my spiritual director said, if you pray to the Holy Spirit, you'll be given the strength to do it. Took me a while to get there. And when we did, when I confronted my brother, there were words. It wasn't all rainbows and unicorns. There were words. Yet there were words that needed to be said. He needed to hear what he had done. Because in his brain, He didn't think that he did anything wrong. It wasn't easy. Is my relationship perfect with him today? No. We can at least get along with each other. My anger and resentment is no longer there. Thank God. Yet still, the relationship is strained. What God wants for us is to have healing. And when there are things that need to be called out into the light, we need to tap into the grace and the strength of the Holy Spirit to do just that. Not to hide it away, not to push it into a corner, not to put it under a carpet. Because it will eventually come out in other ways. And Ezekiel, in the words of the Lord, reminds us, that if you step forward and you try to bring this wrong to the front and to this person, you confront this person, and even if that person doesn't decide to do and change, you have done what you needed to do. Think about that. How many times have we encountered this, that we've, we've confronted someone, and yet they don't change? We've done our part. We've done what we needed to do. And then at this stage, we take and treat them, as you will, as Jesus would treat a tax collector or a pagan, to love and to continue to pray. These are hard words for us today. But this is a way in which we can take and deal with things in our own communities. To deal with the injustices that are in the world 
And oftentimes we're scared to speak out, aren't we? When we see something that's going on in the world, or the way in which things are being done, or the way in which people are being disrespected, and we're afraid to say anything. We need to say something. All of us. In matters of morality, all of us can say something about that. Oh, but Father, you're the one who has the authority. No, no. You deal with more people than I deal with. Collectively, you deal with more people than I do. And if we're all doing our part and doing the work that is asked of us, then we're doing exactly what God wants us to do as a community, working together side by side. I apologize if this word is a little harsh tonight. Yet these readings call us to this accountability. These readings remind us, as this is who we are as a community, that we are called to work together. That we are called to bring the gift of God's love to those whom we encounter, even the ones that we can't stand. Because we are followers of Jesus. May we allow this word to take root in our hearts and in our minds. In our relationship with, Holy, with Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, may we allow the love of God to inundate our hearts with the love that is poured out. Let us walk in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as St. Paul reminded the community at Rome, love is the fulfillment of the law. And Jesus is that fulfillment who is here now and at every moment to help us to bring God's word to the world. We profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting that God will grant the prayers of two or more who are united in prayer, we unite our needs with the needs of the world. For the church, that we may be a model to the world of reconciling our differences, making an example of how to respond to one another with love and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for leaders around the world that they may treat those who may have done something wrong or suspicious with dignity and consideration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose lives were forever changed by the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001, and for a renewed resolve to work toward peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For parents and their children, that God will help them to come together each day in family prayer so that Jesus can be invited into their lives in a special way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Blake David Schiffman and Thanksgiving of his birthday. And for those who are ill, especially Carlos Serna, Tom Outen, Hadley Nadell, Bob Corwin, Letty Luquin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Margaret Sanchez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and merciful God, we ask you hear the prayers we offer today and answer them according to your holy will through Christ our Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand can be found at number 675. That's number 675. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to Praise, sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O 
O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory, that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adored your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, Alejandro, our regional bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. Peter Claver, St. Bernadine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We gather together around the table of the Lord, each one of us, a son, a daughter of God. So now let us pray with courage and confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Turn now and offer a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and the Bread of Life can be found at number 329. That's number 329.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. For true peace and healing in the world, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mary, Queen of Peace. Pray for us. Mary, Health of the Sick. St. Joseph, Universal Patron and Protector of the Church. St. Bernardine of Siena. Pray for us. Thank you for gathering together and celebrating our faith in Christ Jesus. May we once again allow the Word of God to lead and guide and the Eucharist, Jesus Christ, to empower us to do God's work in the world today. Please remember to take home a copy of the bulletin for events that are happening here at St. Bernardine. Uh, if you happen to know anyone, or you yourself, are wanting more knowledge about the Catholic faith, we're going to be running a couple of weeks of inquiry classes, which is part of the initiation process. Basically, a come and see and come and ask questions. What would it mean if I became a part of the Roman Catholic Church? What would my duties and responsibilities be? Or this is where I am on my journey, and I'd like to grow closer to God. So our first one will be on Wednesday, September 13th at 7 p.m. upstairs in the veranda room. So if you happen to know anybody who falls into this category, um, please invite them to that evening on September 13th. The Fall Festival is right around the corner, the weekend of October 6th to the 8th. Uh, we have pre-sale tickets on sale this weekend and next weekend. So if you happen to have come to the festival before and you think that you had enough tickets and then find out you didn't have enough tickets, now is the time to get the pre-sales because you do get a little bargain along the road as you buy um, these in advance. So please stop by. The table is outside uh, the church uh, for pre-sale food and ride tickets. The order forms are available, and so there'll be a good way to get that done. Also, if you'd like to be a festival sponsor, there's still time for that. And the bakers are also wanted for the dessert booth. So please see the flyer at the ticket table. Uh, elementary faith formation begins on Tuesday, September 19th. Registration is still open, and space is available for all grades. That's K through 8 uh, for those who are in the public schools. Registration forms and more information are available on our parish website. The funeral mass for Mary Kesterson will be Saturday, September 16th at 11 a.m. Please also remember uh, our nation and prayer on Monday. We have our two masses at 6.30 and 8.30, and perhaps to make that a day of prayer and a day of service. So working together as community, let us continue to heal from those horrific events from September 11th. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless, strengthen, and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Please join in singing our closing hymn for the healing of the nations, number 743. That's number 743.